What's up guys, Alyssa here, and welcome to our first confirmation lesson. Today we're gonna to be talking about something that's super foundational to the rest of the things that we're gonna be doing throughout confirmation preparation this year. But also, I think it's something very foundational to everyday human interaction. It's, it's the thing that drives what people do and where we go and, and how we act and how we behave. Um, and so we're gonna be talking about our desires those things that we seek, those things that we long for, whether right now, today, I need to go eat lunch or whether it's long-term, I desire this for my life. Um, those those deep-seated things that, that we hope for and that we long for and that ultimately God wants to fulfill. So let's dive in. Okay, so our desires, right? I believe if I were to ask you guys, have you ever desired something or longed for something with no explanation as to where that longing came from? I think each of us would be able to come up with an example. Um, I know for me in my own life, ever since I was a little girl, I've always wanted to travel and see the world and, and learn cultures and languages. Um, and that's not something that the rest of my family members wanted to do. That was something uniquely me and, and something that was placed on my heart um, and it impacted the rest of my life. So maybe for you that desire is you want to be a professional baseball player or you want to entertain people on a stage through theater or dancing or singing. Um, but whatever these desires are, we have to understand that they come from God and they point back to Him. So yes, each of us have these desires for what our life is going to look like in the future. We think about our career from a young age, and we all have hopes and longings. Um, but to the question, what are you seeking, I think there's something a little more human that we need to discuss. Something a little more foundational to what it means to be a, a human being, right? And those are the desires, those are the deeper desires that people don't often talk about as much, right? If you think about when you were sick or maybe you've had a bad day at school uh, and you come home and, and you're not feeling well or, or you're just feeling kind of lonely and we ask ourselves, okay, what am I looking for in that moment? And those moments, those are the human desires, the desires placed on every human heart, right? A desire to be seen and taken care of and known and loved. Um, to be told, hey, you're not alone, you're going to be okay, right? And so these desires that we have, the human ones, the very, the very deep-seated desires for our, from our human heart, um, as well as the desires for food and the desires for, uh, to, to be a millionaire one day or, or whatever it is that we're longing for, all of these things culminate and point back towards God, who fulfills the desire of every human heart. The church and all of her wisdom knows that these desires, these things to have something to long for in life, the fact that we ache for something, that this is precisely what it means to be human. And so when, she, when the church defines what a human person is, this is what she says. This is paragraph 33 of the Catechism of the Catholic Church. It says this, The human person, with his openness to truth and beauty, his sense of moral goodness, his freedom and the voice of his conscience, with his longings for the infinite and for happiness. Man questions himself about God's existence. And so this is me with my openness to truth and beauty, with my sense of moral goodness, with my own longings for the infinite and for happiness that I have for myself and my own life. I begin to question myself about God and his existence. Right, and so these deeper things that we want they aren't there for no reason, okay? These things that you want, whether it's a sandwich for lunch or it's someone to tell you that you're loved um, or anything in between, those things are placed within us specifically by God so that we might point back towards Him, so that we might seek Him out. Not that, not that our faith would be fed to us, but that these desires that we have would, would point towards the infinite and we might find Him in this adventure of love, right? And so that's what we are invited on with this confirmation process. But I wish, in all honesty, I could say that every desire that I have is for heaven, that every desire that I have is good, and it helps me, and helps everyone around me, and it just makes the world a better place. But if you look at the world today, you can tell that some people are not great, <laughs> including me. We're all sinners, right? But, but that is pointing to the fact that some of these desires that we have we pursue them in a way that is not good. And so these desires that we have, these desires that leave us feeling empty or maybe worthless even, or uh, 
anything that pretty much leaves us asking ourselves the question, like, why the heck did I just do that, right? I know that was a bad decision. These desires that oftentimes lead, lead towards sin and, and selfishness, um, these are called disordered desires. And not that because I have disordered desires, I am disordered, right? That's not what that means. It means that these desires that I'm pursuing are not properly ordered to the end for which I have been created. And so when I pursue those things, when I, when I pursue these disordered desires for my own fulfillment, for my own selfishness, um, for my own pleasure, um, I'm left feeling empty, right? It makes sense because it's not good for me, right? And so each of us has pursued something disordered. Um, don't feel like you on the other side of the screen are alone in thinking that uh, sometimes I eat too many brownies or sometimes I seek pleasure in this way or sometimes I'm selfish, right? We've all been there and that's a result of the fall. It's a result of this little thing called concupiscence, right? And so concupiscence is a fancy way of saying my own inclination towards sin. So the fact that we have these disordered desires in general is from our first mother and father, Adam and Eve, who, when they were given the opportunity to choose what is good and true and beautiful, they chose themselves, right? They chose pleasure. They chose to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, right? And so you and I are created in that same way, that same way that, that we have these desires that point back towards heaven, but sometimes we pursue them in such a way that is not good for us, right? And so that's why throughout this confirmation process, it is so important that you and I become people who ask questions, people who examine our desires, who, who are confident enough to ask myself, okay, what do I want? What do I want from life? What do I want now that I'm an eighth grader and I'm gonna be in high school next year, right? Those desires are much different from when we were young, right? And so we're growing and maturing and we have to ask ourselves these questions. So a way of doing this that's helpful to me is always asking myself, what do I want and why do I want it? So for example, um, I, can, I can sense myself in a certain situation saying almost internally, I want people to know who I am, right? Okay, well, why do I want people to know who I am? So that I have more friends. Well, why do I want more friends? Because I want people to be able to hang out with me whenever I want. Um, well, why do I want that? Because I don't want to be alone. No one wants to be alone, and I especially don't want to be alone. Okay, well, why do I not want to be alone? Why is this an issue for me? And the, the thing that comes up deep inside is this understanding of myself that I might not have been able to see before, which is that, well, when I'm alone, it's, it's difficult. I become depressed, and, and my thoughts turn into myself, and things get difficult and, th and hard and, and I don't want to be alone, right? And those are the moments that Jesus desires to enter into with us. Those are the moments where um, when we can reveal that to ourselves about ourselves, we can allow him and ask him, okay, God, what, what is this? What can you do here, right? Because I know these desires, as the catechism said, make me ask questions of who are you and, and how can you fulfill these things? So what can you do here? Can you speak into it, right? And so if we know our desires, then that paves a way for us to be able to eventually understand God's desire for us. This whole program is called Purpose. It's about having a, a purpose in your life, the truth that each of us was made with a purpose. And so by examining our own desires, the things that we want, the things that we seek, eventually we are going to be able to understand ourselves and understand the way that God sees us and the way that he's made us and we'll be able to go forth from there. So as you all get older, you're moving from the sphere of childhood into maturity. You're moving from this time in life where your mom and dad chose everything for you, from what you wear to what you eat to the sports that you play, and even for a lot of you, even your faith, right? We've all been in, in a situation, in a season where I go to mass because my mom and dad want me to, right? I can say that that's the same for me. But as we get older and as we mature, we're invited to question these things for ourselves. We're invited to, to make the decision of, yeah, now I will choose where I go and, and the schools I attend. Um, I will get to choose what I want to do with my faith life, right? And so we must examine our desires. And so my hope going forward through this process is just that we might be able to invite Jesus in through the intercession of all the angels and saints, right? Um, and say, Lord, I want to know what I want. 
I want to know what I want and I want to know what you've made me to want, right? So that at the end of the day, we can finally say, God, it's you. It's you I'm looking for. And we can go forth from there. So we're super excited to begin this process with you. Go ahead and check out those questions we accompanied with this lesson and we'll catch you next time.